like to invite the children up front. I know I don't look like Steve Kolar's, but I'm filling in today. And while the kids are coming, please keep Steve in prayer. The reason he's not here this morning is he and Alexa were in their car and it got hit by a dump truck. They are totally fine, but their car looks awful. And now they can actually say that they've been hit by a dump truck. So anyway, pray for them. Hi, guys. How are you? How's it going? Have any of you ever gotten a boo-boo before? You know what a boo-boo is? Where you hurt yourself? I was at a baseball game on Friday, and a foul ball came whipping around, and I went to get it with my glove and caught it with my wrist. And I got a boo-boo right there, and it hurt really bad. Have you guys gotten a boo-boo recently? Who's gotten one? What'd you, what happened, Will? On your toe? Is it doing better? Yeah. Okay. And my mommy put a aid on it. Excellent. How did your mommy know to put a band-aid on it? When, yeah, when you got the boo-boo, what did you do? Your uncle was at the pool? So you told your uncle? Oh, you were on the rope. Excellent. So you told your uncle, and then what did your uncle do? Did he tell your mom? I'm confusing him. I'm sorry. So he told your mom, and your mom got you a Band-Aid. Got it. Excellent. How about you, Emma? Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. So what did you do? You went home, you told your parents, what did your parents do? They told me to put a band-aid on it. I tried, it just fell in. <laughs> so they told you to walk it off, basically, right? <laughs> okay, all right. No, just teasing, Christina. Yes? Oh, no. What did you do when you hurt your knee? They put a bandage on it when it actually went to the grocery store. Yeah, that's good. Is it better now? Mm-hmm. Excellent. That's great. Well, see, when we hurt ourselves, a lot of times, you guys call out for your mom and dad, right? And they come and take care of it. When you get older... For some reason, you think you don't need mommy and daddy anymore to fix things, and you can do it yourself. But you know what? Sometimes we have troubles that we go through, and we need to call out uh, for someone as well. So we call out for God. What's that? He's got tape on his arm for boo-boo? Yeah. Okay, good. He broke his arm. That's right. I remember that. We've been praying for him. Is he doing better? Excellent. He's all day? Yeah, I understand. Good. Right. But he's getting better. So that's the good thing. So anyway, we have to call out for God in our times of trouble. We have to not forget to do that because just like you call out for your mom or dad and say hey help me I've got a boo-boo and they come and help you God wants to be able to come and help you too we can't forget that we have a God who loves us that cares for us and wants to be for us be there for us in our times of trouble and even when we get boo-boos sound good all right let's pray do one of you want to pray you want to pray go for it Huh? Okay, go for it. Thank you, Jesus, for the food. Amen. I love it. That's great. 
All right, and there's activities downstairs, so if you follow Mr. Lowey and Mrs. Lowey, right at the end there, they'll take you downstairs. All right, have fun. Yeah, you can go downstairs. Our first scripture reading this morning is uh, Psalm 107, verses 1 through 9, and then uh, verse 43. And it it goes like this. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story, those He redeemed from the hand of the foe, those He gathered from the lands, from the east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for this unfailing love and His wonderful deeds for mankind For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Let the one who is wise heed these things and ponder the loving deeds of the Lord. One of the traditions we have at Epworth is we do not take the time to pass the plate. However, we do have plates in the back of the church that we reserve for our offerings and the gifts. They go to help support the church and and care for all the various uh, missions and ministries that the church offers. Uh, So today on your way out or at any time, uh, feel free to add your gifts Uh, to the blessings that the church is able to offer. Let us pray for those offerings. Gracious God, we give you thanks um, for all the the many gifts that the people of the church offer to you, both through money, through time, through effort, and through work and service. We ask that you receive these gifts, that you multiply them, and that you add them to all the, the blessing that you call us to share with the community, and with the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I ask that you please rise and join us in our hymn of preparation, Many Gifts, One Spirit, hymn number 114.
Please be seated. Our second scripture reading this morning is from Colossians uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. The word of God for the people of God. Excellent. Forgot to make sure I had one of these out. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this morning. We give you thanks for your word being shared uh, in this time. And Lord, I ask this morning that either because of me or in spite of me, that you bring a message to your people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, over the past several weeks, we've been looking through the lectionary and specifically looking at the book of Psalms and the epistle readings. The book of Psalms was not just the hymn book for the Hebrew people, it was also the, the songs that were telling their story that were sharing what they were going through, that were lifting up where their hearts were in the midst of them in their relationship with God and discovering more and more what that is. In the epistles, we have the letters from the early church as they're starting to form and come into relationship and figure out exactly who they are. So we're continuing with those this morning. And as we've also been talking about, we truly are living in troubled times. Each day when we look at the news, we worry about what we may see. And we're often left trying to figure out how do we deal with, work through, and respond to the troubled times that we're living in. We wonder, where is God? Why would God allow this to happen? And also, what must I do in the midst? Our scriptures for today offer us insight into how God has worked in and through the troubled lives of God's people throughout time. They also give insight into how we might seek, recognize, and respond to God's work in times of difficulty. So let's begin by taking a look at Psalm 107. It tells the story of God's deliverance of all those gathering back from the time of exile. People coming from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, they've been in exile from the land that God had set aside for them, the land that God had set apart just for them. And they were returning to that time. And there were people that were struggling even in the midst of their returning. And this psalm tells the story of so many of them from wherever they were coming from, how God was meeting them in their trouble, delivering them from that and bringing them back to the promised land, bringing them back to the land that God had set aside for them. And this was a psalm celebrating the fact that God did not leave them hanging, that God did not leave them alone, 
that God came alongside of them in the midst of their troubles and their struggles and brought them home. It is a great message of hope that even in troubled times, God is there and God is with us and God does not leave us alone. Nancy de Classe Walford, who's a professor of Old Testament and biblical languages at McAfee uh, School of Theology in Atlanta, Georgia, says this about Psalm 107. She says, Psalm 107 gives us insight into how to handle troubled times. Recognize the situation you are in. Cry out to God and tell God what you need. Accept the deliverance that God brings and then give thanks to God. And in the end, remember that God, not an earthly strength or power, can provide a habitable place for us and allow us to live the good life that God has given to us. But what about others? What about those who wander in the wilderness and are sick to the point of death through no fault of their own? What about those who are battered by the storms of life? Yes, we can cry out to God. Yes, we can hope in God's good provisions. But we must never forget that those of us who have ample resources and strength are called to be the arms and legs, the hands and feet, the voice of God in this world. God will redeem from the east and the west, from the north and from the south, but redemption of God often takes human form. Often takes human form. If we look at the story of Moses, God heard the cries of the Hebrews when they were in slavery, but did he go himself? He sent Moses. He said, I've heard the cries of the needy, and I'm sending you. How often do we see throughout Scripture people being called to be the hands and feet of God in the midst of troubled times for others. The psalm reminds us of this, that God delivers us from our storms, but then as a response to that deliverance, we are to go and help respond to other people in their storms, in their troubles. So what does the epistle have to say for us today? I love the title in the NIV for this specific epistle from Colossians. It says, living as those made alive in Christ. In other words, this is all about our response to what God has done for us. One of the first things we see is God's vision for us in God's kingdom. It says, in the kingdom of God, which Christ brought forth for all of us, we are equal in God's creation. We all have sacred worth. We all have sacred worth. And it says it right here. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and Christ is in all. In God's kingdom... Is equality. In God's kingdom, everyone is equal in the eyes of God. God doesn't look at us in our division. God looks at us as children that God has created. So we see that vision for God's kingdom within this epistle, which is very important. That's a very foundational piece for how God looks at us. It's not like God is helping these people, but not these people, and those people, but not those people, and these people are lifted up, but not these people over here. Everybody, regardless of who you are, what station you're in, what, what race, what country, whatever, are of sacred worth. That's how God sees that. And then we also see within this epistle in which Paul is writing to the uh, church of Colossus saying, um, I'm sorry, let me back up. He's writing to the church and he's talking to them about how to live as a Christian people, how to respond to the salvation that they have seen and found and experienced in Christ. And one of the things that he talks about is something as Methodists that we call sanctification, God's sanctifying work in us as a result of God's working in and through us. And it says in, uh, in the verse in here, it says, You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, 
slander, and filthy language from, our, from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator, which has been renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. In this letter, Paul is talking and sharing with them that when you experience God, something changes in you. Things need to change. Things need to drop off. Things need to be different about who you are. And it's not just things that you do specifically. It's things that God is doing within you to remove those things that may have led you into trouble to begin with. That may have caused trouble either for you or in the community to begin with. That those things need to drop away. In, Wes, in uh, Wesleyan theology, we have different le levels of grace. We have prevenient grace, which is God's love for us before we even know God. We have justifying grace, which is that grace that we experience at the moment that we realize that there is a God, that God is there, okay? And then we have sanctifying grace, which is the grace that is extend extended to us in which the Holy Spirit works with us to be transformed to become closer to God, to become more like God, to be made back into the image of God for which we were created. When I talk to the kids, I talk about the boo-boos, right? When you get hurt, and what's the immediate response for most kids? Mom, Dad, right? They cry out. They're in need. They need someone to care for them and support them. And they get that care. The same thing happens for us in our troubled times. We cry out for God. When God comes alongside of us and we experience that, that's that time of justification, that time of knowing that God is there for us. And then God's work in us and helping to heal us and transform us and change us is that sanctifying work that the Holy Spirit does in each and every one of us. We are changed. We are not the same and we realize that we are not alone. So what are we to learn from this? What can we take away from the psalm? What can we take away from the epistle? We realize that God has always been a God of community, and a God of redemption, and a God of reconcil reconciliation. God has never given up on God's creation. If you take a look at scripture, one thing you'll notice, if you look at specific verses, you might see a God who says, I'm done with you, do away with you, you're awful, I'm going to destroy you, things like that. But if you step back from scripture and take a look, has God ever completely done that? No. In fact, we see a God that is constantly coming back into our lives, that is constantly coming back in to the lives of his people, and never, ever giving up, no matter what. Even when we mess up, even when we do things that we know we shouldn't do, even when we do things that we know would upset God and goes against what God has taught us, God still comes in and says, I love you. God still comes in and picks us up, brushes us off, fixes our boo-boos, and gives us a new beginning gives us a chance to move forward again. I think these are some of the lessons that we glean from both of these scriptures this morning, but are very important things for us to understand for who we are and how we respond and how we deal with times of trouble. The salvation we receive in Christ, it changes us. It changes how we live it changes how we act. It changes how we understand God and living and people. It changes how we worship. It changes how we serve. It changes everything about us if we allow it, if we accept it, if we embrace that God has come alongside of us and helped us through difficult times. And if we look really closely, we can see a pattern emerging for our lives. The first step is we experience. Through life, we experience lots of stuff. We go through stuff, right? Two, we encounter God's grace and deliverance, and we're transformed. 
we get into a time of trouble, we take the time to remember that our response is to call out to God in our times of need. We experience that encounter with God, and we're changed by it. Step three in the pattern is as a result of that, we then need to live out of our experience of transformation. We need to live, we need to serve, we need to share, we need to act. One of the things with working with youth for a long time is I, I may teach or share things, but I learn so much from them. That was true when I was a teacher, it was true as a youth pastor as well. There was a young lady who was one of my students at Lock Raven Academy named Teresa who taught me a, uh, an incredible lesson. She was suffering with adolescent depression um, and struggling with her own feeling of self-image and everything else. And she called out and talked to her mom and her older sister who was in college. And she went to them and explained to them what she was feeling and the struggles that she was having and everything else. And basically what they said is, it's a phase, you'll get through it. And when I talked to her and she was sharing, she said, you know what? They keep telling me it's a phase. They keep telling me that I'll get through it. They keep telling me that they went through it when they were that age. But no one takes the time to tell me how. No one takes the time to tell me how to get through it. What an incredible story that was. When people are going through difficult times, they need people to come alongside of them. That's what we see God do in both of these situations. Jesus came along people, he offered salvation. God came along the Hebrew people, offered them salvation from exile, salvation from slavery and everything else with the intent that those people would then go out and do the same for others. That's the glory of it. When God has done something in our life, our response is to then go out and do that for others, to be the hands and feet of God in the world, to make a difference as a result of that. We need to come alongside of others and not just say, oh, you'll get through it, but actually take them by the hand and walk them on the journey through it. As a result... Uh, since then, in youth ministry and in other ways, I've taken the time to share my story, to share who I am, to share the troubles that I've been through, to share the messiness that I've experienced in life, but not just the messiness, but where God came in and helped me through it, and how that happened, and how that transformed me. And what's amazing with that is watching how those words, how those stories transform other people's lives. It provides hope. It provides healing, not because of me or anything that I've been through or anything that I've done, but because the story ultimately is about what God has done in the midst of my troubles. It gives people a sense that they're not alone, that there is help, that there is hope, and that there are others out there that, with God's help, will be with them and help them, them to guide through so many things. So the trick is this. We're going to go through troubled times. What's our response? We need to shout out to God. We need to ask God to be with us in those times. Once we recognize God walking alongside of us, we need to embrace that. We need to celebrate that, and we need to pray for and seek out the changes that God is going to make in our lives to prepare us to be his hands and feet in the world, to be able to help others out in their times of trouble. And we need to live out of that experience in such a way that we allow ourselves to be open to do that. We need to tell our story of where God met us and where God transformed us and where God is taking us into the next steps. So I ask you to think about these things. How are you sharing your stories? How are you sharing your stories of where you have met and encountered God along the walk? How are you sharing your stories of where God has met you and helped you and worked with you through difficult times? 
How have you shared that story and who have you shared that story with? Whose life, whose life has been changed as a result of hearing what God has done in the midst of yours? Stories are so important. Think about it. Think of a favorite teacher or a favorite uh, adult friend or whatever. And how many of you, in thinking about that person right now, can think of a story that they shared with you? How many of you can think of something that they said to you that has stuck with you all these years and impacted who you've become? Our stories are very important. I titled the lesson today, Let the Redeemed of the Lord Tell Their Story. And I ask that you think about your story. Where have you encountered God? What is God preparing for you? And how are you taking that story and sharing it with others? Maybe in words, maybe also just in deeds, being the hands and feet of God. The last verse of our psalm for today, Psalm 107, verse 43, I love what it has to say. And I think this is a great closing thought for us. It says, let the one who is wise heed these things and ponder the loving deeds of the Lord. So I ask all of you to take all that's been shared so far. And I want you to ponder these things. I want you to discover your story. I want you to live into them and begin to share it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, if I could ask everyone to rise and join us in our hymn of sending, hymn number 560, Help Us Accept Each Other. One of the things whenever we gather for worship is that it's a time of preparation for us to go out into the mission field, uh, to go out into the world and to live out the things that God has taught each and every one of us. So our benediction is always a time of sending. So it felt appropriate this morning uh, to extend a time of prayer and blessing from our congregation as we're about to send out two of our own, to serve in the world. 
uh, as they get ready to head to Liberia. So I ask Nathan and Anna to please come forward. those guys. <laughs> um, anyone, if they would like to come and lay hands on them as we pray for them, as we send them forth into the mission field, may come and do so, or you can, if you would like, extend a hand. Oh my goodness, we got tears already. <laughs> One of the things in which I feel like our congregation is extremely blessed is the people that go out and serve. Um, Mary Heflin, who is a member of ours, is on a world mission tour right now, going to different places around the world. We've got Abigail in Botswana. Um, we've got uh, Jim Bolliard serving two churches down in North Carolina and Joy Katanga in seminary and everything else. We have people that are going out and doing things for God, which is an amazing blessing. And it means something about what God is doing in the midst of us in this church. So always remember that. Let us share a word of blessing and commissioning and sending for Anna and for Nathan. Gracious God, we give you thanks for Anna and for Nathan, for the hearts that you've created in them, for the desire to serve, the desire to be your hands and feet, the desire to go out and care for others in their need in the world. Lord, as they, as they travel to Oklahoma and ultimately to Liberia, we ask that you continue to prepare their hearts for the work you would have them do that you help them to realize that they are your hands and feet and that in everything that they do, they are a blessing for you. Prepare them, Lord, and let them know that they are not alone, that your love, that your care, that your blessing goes with them and that the love, care, and blessing of their church home goes with them as well. Lord, prepare their hands for the work. Prepare their feet for the journey. Prepare their hearts for what they are about to encounter and allow your spirit to shine forth in all ways that through them others see you. We ask that you be with them, that you guide them, that you care for them, that you protect them in everything. And Lord, we look forward to their return home and the time in which they get to share their story so that we may be changed and blessed by it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. It's going to be great. Excellent. <laughs> wow. What a blessing it is to be able to send people out into the mission field to know that God is working through people to go out and make a difference, not just in our church, but beyond our church. The fact that the ministry that we have here, that God has created here, is reaching out beyond our doors. What a fantastic thing that is. So as you go out today, I want you to be thinking about what story is God creating in you? And how are you sharing that story? And share it, and share it, and share it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.